Okay, hi there and uh, welcome to a macro video. We're going to take a look for a few minutes at how we measure economic growth and we'll take you exactly through what students need to know. So economic growth to an economist is, uh, is measured in two ways really. One is an increase in the annual real value of the goods and services produced in an economy uh, from restaurants to motor car manufacturing. Uh, and that's measured by the annual percentage change in a country's real GDP. Uh, but growth is also, and this is quite important, it's also a long-term increase in a nation's productive capacity or potential output, as shown, for example, by an outward shift of the production possibility curve. Now, real GDP is a key concept here. GDP itself is just the monetary value of the national output of goods and services. And real GDP involves taking inflation into account. We deflate the level of money GDP because of the effects of inflation. Uh, typically, when inflation is high, that reduces the real value of the output of goods and services. We have a separate video on how to calculate real GDP. Here's a chart showing the latest economic growth for the UK. We can either measure it in terms of the quarter-on-quarter -quarter change that's shown in the blue histogram on the left-hand side, or we can measure it in terms of the annual rate of growth, uh, a quarter on the previous year's quarter, in other words, the annualised increase in GDP. And that's shown on the right-hand side. It's shown by the orange line. Can you see here, for example, that actually the rate of growth in the UK, the pace of expansion, has been slowing down uh, from around 3% since uh, about 2013. So the UK economy has been weakening. In 2019, for example, GDP in the UK only rose by 1.7%. And there are some fears of recession uh, in, in the months ahead, particularly in the wake of the impact of the coronavirus. These are the countries in the world, according to the International Monetary Fund, that had the highest rate of growth of GDP in real terms in 2019. This is the Premier League, if you like, of the fast-growing countries in the world. Uh, Dominica, just a shade under 10%. Uh, South Sudan, Rwanda, a very interesting African country, growing at just under 8%. Bangladesh, fast-growing Southeast Asian country. Uh, notice here that all of these fast-growing countries are developing stroke emerging countries. That's typically the case. They have potential to grow much more quickly than the high-income advanced nations. Key point to bear in mind here is that the short-term growth, where we are in terms of this data, for example, for 2019, that's going to depend on where a country is in the economic cycle. So at any one moment in time, if we take a snapshot then some countries will be in a slowdown, perhaps one or two countries in recession. Who knows, perhaps more in 2020. Other countries will be on the upswing phase of the cycle. So keep in mind, any one-year data is merely a snapshot of the cyclical growth. However, other countries might be growing quickly, perhaps as part of post-conflict or post-civil war reconstruction. There's a lot of investment coming into those countries driving the growth. Or perhaps they have discovered new natural resources. And again, that's acted as a catalyst for inward investment. Other countries might be growing more quickly or indeed more slowly because they're affected by external economic shocks. And those shocks uh, tend to have an asymmetric effect. They will affect some countries more than others. They will impact some regions of the world more than others. Typically, the rate of economic growth, if we're trying to measure it, it tends to slow down as per capita incomes rise. This is partly the base level effect. If you go from 10 to 20, that's a 100% increase. But if you go from 20 to 30, that's a 50% increase. So as the base increases, the percentage rate of growth tends to decline. So there we go. Hopefully that was useful. A quick primer on measuring economic growth.